We all know how important it is to recycle as much as possible. But when we can't recycle or reuse things, we place them in the trash and a garbage truck picks it up and takes it to a landfill. Now, when you hear the word landfill, you probably picture a big giant heap of foul smelling garbage somewhere. But a modern landfill isn't what you might think. In fact, I'm standing on one right now. So how does it do that? Well, let me show you. It takes the work of dedicated professionals, environmental engineers, land planners, surveyors, and city officials to plan and operate a landfill that keeps our communities clean and environmentally safe and ends up looking like this. A modern landfill is carefully designed to protect the soil, air, and groundwater around it, preserving the surrounding environment for generations to come. This is Dave, and he runs the landfill. Dave, can you tell me a little bit about how it all starts? Sure, Lane. You wanna hop in? Let's go. So Dave, what is the role, really, of the landfill as it relates to the community? They all rely on us to make sure that their trash is disposed of in a safe and environmentally uh, protective manner. Tell me a little bit about how the landfill functions. I mean, what do you do with all the waste? Well, this is a uh, large landfill. We have about 750 acres here. About half of that, 360 or so, is the actual landfill footprint. So the balance of the property is set aside for uh, buffer zones and wildlife habitat and floodplains and, and uh, those type of natural uh, devices around the site. Once a site is selected, it's carefully prepared in stages, one section at a time. These sections are called cells. Cells start underground and eventually rise above the surface. So they need to be excavated, graded, and ventilated before they're ready to operate. So Dave, how do you prepare a landfill? Seems like a daunting task, because it looks like you guys moved a lot of dirt. Yeah, it can take, normally it can take a couple of months in order to be able to fully excavate a cell and get it ready and prepped for the lining system. Then, a liner is placed in the cell, covering the bottom and sides to protect the soil and groundwater outside. It takes planning. Yes. Uh, there's a lot of engineering in this. Tremendous amount of engineering. Uh, some of the other technical hydrology and, and geology is involved. Engineers get involved in the planning phase of this and when do we build it, how do we build it, all the testing that's done. There's a very strict regimen of soil testing and liner testing that's done to make sure that the liner is impermeable. Once the cell is created, it becomes the entry point of the landfill, where the trash is dumped and covered each day. And that's called the working face. It's actually a very small part of the overall footprint of the landfill itself, and that's actually done on purpose. It's actually done to minimize blowing debris and also contain trash and odor. When I look at the working face, proportionally, how big is the working face versus like the rest of the landfill? Oh, if you think about it in terms of a working face is just a little postage stamp on an envelope. It's generally less than two acres. And uh, in this particular case, it's about 300 by 400 feet. Yeah. And how much waste gets brought in here on a daily basis? Well, today is a busy day. We'll do about 4,000, 4,200 tons, about 750 to 800 garbage trucks by the time the day's through. All the loads, are, as they're brought in, they're systematically dumped at the toe of the working face. And as you can see, the dozers spread it. We try to spread it in thin layers and then get multiple machine passes on it, four to six times over it with a 125,000 pound compactor to drive as much density and compaction as we can. Wow, so it's all about pushing the trash down. Yeah, crushing it into as small a space as possible. If you think about it, you put your can out on the curb at about 50 pounds to the yard. We put it in a garbage truck and bring it out here at about 
eight to 900 pounds to the yard. But when we dump it out on the ground here and pack it with our packers, this is going in the ground at about 17 or 1800 pounds to the cubic yard. Wow. Wow, and those compactors weigh how much? About 125,000 pounds a piece. Wow. So could you lift it? No. I could try, but no. <laughs> At the end of each day, the waste is covered with a plastic liner and dirt. The liner is like a giant sealable sandwich bag that helps control the odor and accelerate the decomposition process. Cells last several years before they're full. Engineers and city officials follow environmental rules and guidelines for landfills. And thanks to their protective layers, collection systems, and regular testing of the surrounding air, soil, and groundwater, they keep the environment safe. I'm here with Adam and he's the environmental manager here at the landfill. And you're here full time. Yes, sir. So there must be a lot to manage from an environmental standpoint. So what does that all include? So we're trying to do everything we can to protect the environment. So your drinking water, our air, making sure that we're not putting anything out into the environment that could be harmful. Minimizing waste and odor and air pollution are major priorities for the landfill. Plus it's sustainable, right? We really want to be sustainable into the future, right, with our controls and practices. And I know one of our practices is actually this vapor system. Can you tell me how that works and how that controls the odor? At a modern landfill, odor neutralizing liquid misters and air powered vapor systems surround the site to minimize odor of the working phase, as well as key areas throughout the property that protect nearby communities. The water used to minimize the neutralizer comes from the landfill stormwater retention or reclaimed water. So none of it is taken from the community's water supply. So we actually take a chemical and we run it, we heat it and then push it through a blower and it runs through these lines along our wind fence and it's invisible and it has no odor and it binds to the molecules of the odor forming, uh, I guess, odiferous chemicals and compounds and degrades them. So there's nothing that goes beyond the fence. I can hear it, but how do you make sure it's actually working? So you can hear it, but you can also test with grass or something like that to see it flutter and then let it go. Dude, it's super technical too. Yes, sir. If you were to guess, right, there's probably a lot of tasks. You don't do them all. But if you lined up those daily tasks, I mean, how many are we actually doing? I would say between 20 and 30 daily tasks, just checking on everything as part of our permits and then making sure that we're controlling any windblown waste, odors, anything like that. Wow. Almost sounds like a full time job. Yes, sir. Large fans are often used to blow air in a certain direction, ensuring that the odor stays contained within the working phase. As the day proceeds, landfill workers measure the odor to keep it under control and patrol the area to collect any loose trash that might have blown away from the working phase. Earlier we were talking about cell construction. Right, how you guys build it and all the liners. Actually, that cell is creating two byproducts. One of them is liquid and the other is gas. And that's, that's what these are, right? These are well. So as we fill the landfill up, we make this large column of waste. The decomposition makes gas. So we drill down through from the top and then we put a slotted pipe down with rock around it and then put a vacuum on it, just like you'd vacuum at home to suck the gas out. These cells capture the gas and liquid that are produced as trash decomposes. Pipes, filters, and pumps are installed to prevent the gas and liquid from getting back into the environment. Why are these gas wells so important? Because if we weren't to capture all of the gas, we can have migration issues to where we can impact groundwater, they cause odors, we're trying to be good stewards in our community. You know, one of the exciting things about these wells and collecting methane is we actually take this methane and we create natural gas. 
Absolutely. And what do we use that natural gas for? So we return it back into the local pipeline grid. Wow, so the community, our surrounding community that is, actually receives the natural gas that we're converting from methane. That's correct. You're a genius. Let's go look at the plant. All right. Large pipes collect the gas and pumps send it to plants located on the landfill. The plants convert as much of the gas as possible into renewable energy that helps power the homes and businesses in our communities. Any excess gas that can't be used is burned off safely at a flare, 20 feet above the ground. So this is where all the gas goes after we pull it up out of the ground. So when we start to bring it out of the field from the vertical wells, we end up with about half methane, half carbon dioxide. And there's some other things in there, but those are the primary things. And what we're after is the methane. So when it comes in through our header line, a large pipe it gets compressed and run through membranes. And the membranes strip out everything but the methane. And what comes out of the plant on the other side is about 99% methane or natural gas. We can put it back in the local grid. So when we bring in the raw gas and it gets run through the membrane, what we have to do is combust all of the byproducts to keep them from getting into the atmosphere. Mm. So we run to this tox flare. So that gets rid of all the byproducts when the plant is running so we can send clean gas out the other side. And then when the plant has to go down for periodic maintenance mm. to keep it running at optimal level, we've got another flare that can bust everything. Right, so actually two flares doing two different things. Yes, sir. But both very environmentally sound. Absolutely. The liquid that is produced as trash decomposes is called leachate. The cells capture the leachate and pump it to tanks, where it is tested and treated to ensure that it is environmentally safe. So this is the second byproduct. We talked about gas, which is a little bit higher. Is there something reference the engineering with having leachate lower than the gas wells? Yes, sir. How does that work? So the idea being the liquids are making their way down and the gases are making their way up. Mm. So it gets extracted here and then where does it go from here? So it goes to leachate tanks that we've got. We've got large storage tanks, which you can see behind us. And then also we've got certain portions of it that we have to run through a pretreatment plant before we can discharge it to the sewer, where the sewer goes to a wastewater treatment plant, which they treat it there. Because it's a byproduct of kind of degradation of all of the trash. So trash juice, stinky water. So we treat it. We clean it up, we send it to the sewer, yes, it goes to the wastewater treatment center, and it gets cleaned up more. Absolutely, we're trying to have as much environmental protection as we can get. So even though landfills contain trash that wasn't recycled, they actually do some recycling of their own. Dave, you know, there's so many things going on at the landfills. Uh, one of the things I think of is we actually can collect rainwater right that we kind of give back the clean water to the people itself i think of food waste and organics yeah. right to feed animals um what else can you think of that goes on well composting is another uh another thing commonly done at landfills where we can that can be used for the farmers to help grow food can also be used in landscaping there's just all kinds of uses for it now what we have here is our mulch operation so things like tree trimmings, Christmas trees, bagged leaves or grass, things like that that come into the landfill are run through a tub grinder where it's ground up into mulch. And then this mulch is processed and dyed like they're doing back here. And that dyed mulch is then returned to the marketplace and taken out in bag and works its way into the landscaping stores and into people's front yards. You know, as you can see, we just don't take garbage in and bury it and put it in a hole. We actually reuse a lot of what comes in. That's right. We're doing the mulch and the concrete at this location. About 400,000 yards of mulch a year of, of green waste is kept out of the landfill. And about another half a million tons a year of concrete is kept out of the landfill through our concrete recycling project. That's amazing. 
Even after a landfill is closed, it's monitored for as long as 30 years to be sure it's safe. In several places around the country, closed and covered landfills have become parks, bike paths, and even golf courses. You know, as you look back on your career, spending years and years on the landfill, what kind of sticks out to you on what's changed, right? How has the landfill kind of evolved from then to now? Yeah, that's a good question. You know, I, I thought about that 30 years ago when, when uh, we landfilled, we paid, most of the attention was to just dig the hole and get it covered. Uh, there was still some environmental protection to it, but it wasn't the top focus at the time, you know? But as, as time gone on, you think about now we have protective systems, composite liners, we're, we care about monitoring groundwater and gas production. We have environmental professionals working in the business now, engineers, hydrologists, geologists. I mean, all that has just really raised uh, the uh, game in the, in the landfill industry. Yeah, and I, and I see, and maybe you saw too, that really the relationship has changed between the landfill and the local community and in some sense the community has kind of gotten closer to us hasn't it oh yeah in the you know years back we were out in the country nobody really wanted to associate with the landfill they maybe went there on the weekends that was it but as things have grown and we've become urban landfills and we have lots of neighbors we've become a part of the community and we've had to become a part of that community to to really be able to provide them the service that they need and still not have an impact on their lives. And it's a little bit about, at least what I've heard, is kind of coming up with solutions together. Does that make sense? Yes, we, we, uh, we spend a lot of time talking back and forth to see what's important to them. And then we, we build our fill sequences and designs uh, to be able to fit in with what's important to the community. I'll tell you, I've had a lot of fun and uh, thanks for taking us through it. Well, thanks for coming out. We're glad you could become a part of it. I bet a landfill isn't quite what you thought, is it? It's an amazing operation that turns waste into beautiful green space and environmentally safe energy. Good to know we figured out how to use science and technology for the benefit of our communities.